say that they would be out of town, they couldn't make it, and this and that. And, and uh, so I'm glad anybody's here and very grateful to see you. Um, we're going to sing first, and these particular sets of words you'll be able to see up on the screen. A little later, however, you might need a hymnal because while we're counting ballots, we decided we'd sing. But that'll be much later. But right now, stand and let's sing I Love to Tell the Story. sing and have a seat. I'm going to do a little devotion and then uh, Mike, our lay leader, Mike Tewksbury, will come and lead us in a kind of uh, concert of prayer uh, like we did last year at the beginning of our meeting. Here is the scripture that I just happened to map early this morning before I came to church. For those of you that don't know maps, 
That's a, a way of studying or devoting oneself to the Word that involves meditation, application, prayer, and surrender. And um, I do this with Pastor Paul and uh, Pastor Paul Wallace and also Pastor Paul Weir who has begun to meet with Pastor Paul Wallace and I in our covenant time. So here's the scripture we just happened to hit this morning. Philippians 4.10 I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, Paul says, that now at length you, he says to the Philippian Christians, have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. When Paul says, I'm so glad you've revived your concern for me, that means they sent him help. You know, you know what I mean? Financial support. That's his kind of euphemistic way of saying, thanks for the money you sent, it really helped. For Paul was on the mission field, and this was a church he had planted, and he was glad that they supported him. I think I landed on Philippians 4.10 on purpose, and that the Lord wants me, before we even think about launching a building committee, because that's what will happen, uh, God willing, by the end of our time together, that that's what the Lord wants me to do. He wants me to help us revive our concern for the church, for our sister district, and especially our brothers and sisters in Liberia. So, I feel like the Lord gave me this prayer, and I'd like to pray this with you first, and then during our concert of prayer time, we'll have a chance to pray in small groups for the work in Liberia. So, pray with me, would you? Lord Jesus, Master, Savior, Good Shepherd, Guide us today into your holy will for the project that looms before us. But even as we build or consider the possibility of building, help us to remember Christians the world over who have little or nothing in the way of facilities. Yet do the gospel work with faith, with spirit, and with energy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, especially for our relationship, first with James Labala, and now with Aaron Yankee, Stanley Maba, and the others, building your church in Liberia. Show us how to revive our concern for them, even as we possibly launch a building project for us. Make us effective for the sake of your word, your good news so that your name may be glorified here in the Morton area and all around the world. Through your great name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 The structure of our time is this. We're going to spend maybe what, what may end up being equal parts in prayer, in kind of reports, how things are going, and in an all-church conference. And for that portion, um, our district superintendent, Mary, Mary Catherine Pierce, will, it will lead us through that portion. And during that portion, we have two items of business, and they are to receive the study report uh, that you have in your hands, and if that's received, elect a, a building committee. Uh, we'll have a couple of additions to the piece of paper that you have in your hands for the building committee, but that'll be cool. So, Mike, if you'd come, lead it. what I want you to do is find somebody to pray with. You know, the people you're sitting next to are your small group. Maybe three or four in a small group. Can you, can, can you not be shy? <laughs> Go ahead and turn your bodies, face each other, and what Mike is going to do is read a scripture and a topic and then give us maybe just a minute to pray about each of these things.
The idea is to pray out loud, but you don't have to, of course. But if there's enough mumbling going on, it will seem like a symphony in the ears of our God, who loves it when his people pray. Go, Mike. The Lord once said to those who would rebuild the temple, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts in Zechariah 4.6. Let's pray for the presence of God's Spirit in any building that we do. Jesus prayed for unity amongst believers when he prayed that they may be one in John 17:22. Let's pray for unity in the tasks to which the Lord calls us. Psalm 100 says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Let's pray for our worship and music ministry.
Proverbs 22.6 says, Train up children in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Let's pray for our children, parents, and those who minister to them. preacher once said, remember your creator in the days of your youth in Ecclesiastes 12.1. Let's pray for our youth and for our ministry to and with the youth. The psalmist prayed, So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation. Psalm 71.18 Let's pray for our ministry to and with our seniors. In Ephesians 5.21, Paul said that husbands and wives should submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. The psalmist says that children are a heritage from the Lord in Psalm 127.3. 
Let's pray for marriages and families as well as for those God calls to be single. Paul once wrote, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Philippians 4.10 Let's renew our concern for missionaries who, like Paul, are doing the Lord's work around the world. Remember Connie Week and the work in Liberia. Today in worship, we heard Jesus' word to the rich young ruler, Go, sell all that you have and give it to the poor, Mark 10:21. Let's ask God for his wisdom as we seek ways to minister to the poor in our area and around the world.
Psalm 33:12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Let's pray for our nation, her leaders, and the upcoming election. The writer of Hebrews says, Remember those who were in prison, as though in prison with them. Hebrews 13, 2. Jesus said, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5, 44. Let's pray for both persecuted and imprisoned Christians around the world and their persecutors. In Hebrews 13, 7, the writer tells us to remember your leaders. Paul tells us to pray for them. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2. Let's pray for our leaders, our bishop, our district superintendent, and those who lead our church.
Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather today to lift our voices in prayer to you. Father, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers of petition to you for our country, our nation, our church, the poor. Father, pour out your grace upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to do some reporting now just for for fun. Uh, Any of the staff that's here that would like to say a quick word, go ahead. I just want to say one word, a report about our staff. As you know, uh, other than Becky, who is the completer in my life, Lori is the second most wonderful completion in my life and ministry here in this church, and I thank the Lord for her. Uh, she'll share here in a minute. Um, Carrie, if you want to say something, you'd be more than welcome to. Carrie is what? I'm good. You're good. Um, uh, Amy's going to report, but she is at an Abbey concert, and so we gave her permission to be, and we have a report from Amy. Eric's going to report. He's going to say something. He doesn't have a choice wherever he is. There he is. Uh, Eric's going to report, and uh, and then I'll I'll sort of wrap it up. But I thank God uh, for sending us our two newest staff members, but I thank God for all of them. Um, Our two newest ones are Eric Gordon, who has a passion for Jesus that makes my heart sing. And I'm grateful for Shelly Kaner, although you've got to pray for her because our computers are beating her to the ground. We have something weird going on, and we just need to pray for... uh, maybe new programs or something. But B, she is so sweet and loving and welcoming, and you've probably met her. I thank God for her. So, Lori, if you'd start us off, we'll just do a few quick reports. Okay. This is Amy's report. Um, it's a blessing to serve here at uh, Morton UMC. I have been part of the staff since 1997, a week before my son was born. And my life has been blessed ever since. That kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Um, because now he's in college. (laughs) Children's ministry continues to move forward and thrive. We provide two study times a week where the children can be involved in growing their faith, Sunday school and watch. That's our Wednesday night program. In addition, we have special events monthly where children are invited to come and have fun and feel loved. We not only teach them about Jesus, but we encourage them and lead them to go deeper and serve him with a gladsome heart. We are blessed beyond measure with all the willing volunteers who continue to come and share their faith journeys with our kids. Thank you. And if you know, on Sunday morning at 9.30, the rooms are packed with kids. So there is a need for continued growth for rooms. Music is also a wonderful ministry where we continue to serve by drawing people in closer to worship through our music. This church is filled with so much talent. We are striving to utilize all talents and bring an instrumental, you know, that was that word? Instrumentalist, as well as vocalists who can use their gifts to serve the Lord and draw us all a little deeper in worship. And when you serve in this way, it's a huge commitment to be available for weekly rehearsals, singing two services every every summer, um, occasional funerals and special services. I'm blessed with so many good friends who are always willing to share their love of Jesus and their gifts of music. And so um, also the music ministry does not have a designated place. So they're kind of here and there and everywhere. And Carrie can talk about the rehearsal hall that's (laughs) the little closet behind the the closet behind the closet back there. It's it's great uh, to have all the music that we do have and and that we're utilizing all the spaces that we can for the music ministry. Um, Adult ministry is continuing to to grow. We offer new opportunities um, in the winter and also in the the fall. And we are being creative in using our our rooms, uh, sometimes meeting in the kitchen, other times meeting in people's houses, which is is very appropriate, um, very first church kind of stuff you know, to go into the people's houses. So we do that when we can. We offer um, all kinds of Bible studies, um, book studies, um, interest groups that then relate it back to, to, to Christ. And um, so I hope that you find that there's a place for you 
If not, please let me know and we will create something new. There's always a, there's always a place to start something new because uh, that's where people are added in, is in the new groups. Um, so one of the most recent new things was the cooking series that we did. If you missed it, you are you really missed out because it was fabulous. We had experts coming in every week to give us a little cooking lesson and, and I went and I learned something every week and I have, I'm like redoing my kitchen to, to add new things now. So it's a lot of fun. But it, if you want to come to my house, I'll practice on you. That's right. But you, you can't be a meat and potatoes person at my house either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, there would be something there that you would like, I'm sure. Um, but um, if there's something that I can do, please let me know that uh, some way that you, a group that you would be interested in or that you know some people that are interested in, uh, please let me know. It's a, a, it is a privilege to be here and to be serving in this church. Thank you so much. I want to remind you all that not only is Pastor Lori our associate pastor, but she's also, are you still vice? Till July. She is also the vice chair of the Board of Ordained Ministry, and in July will become the chairperson of our conference, Board of Ordained Ministry, which is a time-consuming, uh, important Jesus work in our conference. and. And it's organizing, but there's more than just organization there. And I, you have, and Lori has this, the right temperament to lead that group. So be praying for her, please, in both her work in the conference level and her work among us. Eric, come on up. Is this, okay, there we go. Um, so quickly on youth ministry, Sundays we have uh, confirmation, two confirmation classes going at the same time in a little uh, meeting area outside of the pastor's office and then in my uh, closet of an office. Um, and those, the teachers are very dedicated. It's a big two-year commitment uh, to do that. And we have some wonderful teachers that uh, have committed uh, four separate couples leading the two different groups and doing confirmation retreats and church visits and uh, there's always something new going on and in the high school class we're dealing with difficult questions and doubts of the kids and if we're not doing that then we're trying to equip the kids to study the Bible on their own, give them those tools uh, so they don't need to come to a class to dig into God's Word um, and trying to just learn the Word uh, on a deeper level. Um, and then on Wednesday nights, we have our youth group, and we have a handful of dedicated volunteers that are there almost every week, and we have guest speakers coming in at least once a month, and we're challenging them and uh, actually handing out literal challenges of Bible reading or prayer uh, or works and deeds, and the kids have taken to that pretty well. It's always tough, and they don't always complete the challenges. Uh, but they are in the Word more than they were before. They're praying more focused than they were before, and there's more service going on from individuals than there were before because they're simply getting directly challenged, and uh, they're reacting really well to that. That's been a blessing to see. Uh, and then we are right now going through the attributes of God, always trying to get the kids to see God for who He is a little bit more, and... Um, so there's a chance of being in awe uh, of him, uh, the way we should be in awe of him, trying to get the kids to a point where they come out of here strong uh, and bold in their faith and not lukewarm and, and comfy. Um, and then we always have uh, plenty of events. This is a very busy time of year. There are There's a lock-in slash insomnia fest going on Friday, and we're going to see a movie today, and... If anyone wants to go see Risen with us, uh, there will be some of us going to that at peak in at 4.15. You're all welcome. Um, and there's, yeah, we went to see an apologist at Bradley last week, and there's always something going on. And I can't really think of all that it is. There's 
Yesterday. Oh, well, there's every other Saturday we try to do service Saturdays. Um, so we go to different things and serve different people. Yesterday was loaves and fish at First United Methodist, and they got to serve the homeless uh, there and do a lot of good work there and see just how joyful um, people can be with basically nothing. That kind of hit home for a lot of the kids that we took yesterday, but there's been something completely different every other Saturday where we're out there serving the community and just trying to give the kids different kinds of opportunities so that they can see maybe what it is that they that their heart lights up for. Um, so we're trying to make it different every time. Uh, and then we have the uh, New York City mission trip. There'll, in case anyone here cares and needs to hear that, there will be an informational meeting on that trip on March 14th, but the trip is in June, and then Mission Survivor in July, and we'll continue to meet, meet weekly for fun and Bible study during the summer um, on some level, and it's just keeping going and trying to keep up and battle the competition of everything that we're competing against, sports and homework and everything that takes the kids uh, away from here and interested in other things. Um, that's that's the battle. That's the big that's the big fight. But uh, trying to fight it, and uh, have a lot of adults that are helping in that fight, and so that's a huge blessing. And yeah, it's been ten-ish months for me here, and starting to figure some things out. It's a rebuilding project, but we're getting there, and uh, it's been a wonderful blessing seeing all the support that the church has for the youth. And um, apparently, I was supposed to sneak in some sort of pro-building propaganda um, and I've seen it time and time again that in youth ministry uh, this, the whole if you build it they will come thing is kind of true um, we don't really have the space at this point to have a whole bunch of cool stuff laid out so as soon as they walk into the door it's a carnival not that a carnival is what we're trying to go for but sometimes just that feeling of as soon as they walk through the door, wow, this is fun and I want to be here, um, can be a powerful motivator. Uh, and at this point, we just we couldn't do that if we wanted to. Um, so we make do with what we got and we preach the word of God and, and try to give them joy and that'll do for now. More space would be nice, sure. Um, but anyway, I think that's about it. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Eric. I just want to say how privileged I am to work with Joanne and Jane, who have been here 30 years, which even, I guess, predates Amy's coming, doesn't it? And, w and what wonderful, gifted servants they are. How... I, do, I, I don't think that I could do a thing. I, I feel so dependent upon the wonderful staff that God has gathered. And uh, Joanne would be right up there at the top of that list. She's our eyes and ears. She does so much with missions. She does so much with um, the welcoming committee. I praise God for her. Um, I could go on and on about the staff and about the lay leadership of the, of the church. Um, we've got three or four now active lay speakers. And I'm, if I haven't already asked you, I'm asking you now, you get five minutes to preach one of the seven last words of Christ on, on, on uh, good, Friday. good Friday. Have I asked you yet, John? Yep. Oh, good. I, I asked Dalton today, so he's, he's under... Uh, Don, have I asked you yet? Yes. Okay. Okay. If there's any others, Mike. and we may, we, we it's going to be awesome. I'm, I think I'm. It won't just be our official lay speakers, but I wanted to be sure that you were all asked. Um, thank you. Oh, Mike, did I ask you yet, Mike? Oh, Mike, this is your asking right now. <laughs> but if you, but if you have trouble getting off at noon on Good Friday. Oh, awesome. Praise the Lord. Nobody's going to die. Uh, okay, I'm just kidding you. I'm kidding you. It's just silly. But I, I'm grateful to God for Mike, our lay leader, for Andy, our ad board chair, 
uh, Jim Bankendorf, our vice chair, for Lori, our finance chair, for John Kuhn, our PPR chair, uh, for all of those in the ministry areas, uh, Deb Rada and others, for Chuck, our treasurer, who we'll hear from in a minute. Uh, this, this is what keeps me alive, is all of you and the work you do, the service you provide, whether it's worship committee, Norma, or whether it's you know, whatever hat you're wearing at any particular time. If I can go up to Bob Bailey and say, Bob, are you up for Ackermans at 6.30 on Easter Sunday morning? And he says, well, sure. And I just go, yes! That's, that's... Or if, if Lichty comes and says, we need to get this building committee going. I mean, this is... You are the ones that make all of this work, and I praise God for you. So... Um, we're going to get a little financial update from the, from the, from the treasurer, Chuck Birchinoff. And I think he's got a PowerPoint to go with it. So Chuck, you want to come up here or stay down where you can see it or whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, we could talk about numbers for quite a while. i try to keep this brief. Um, our budget for last year was like on the order of $722,000, and we started at the beginning of last year with $31,000 in the bank. So, you know, right away, you know you're going to have to be careful. And we were through the year. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, the red line is how things actually happened. And as you can see, our, our cash on hand was below what we had projected at the beginning of the year, almost throughout the year. Now, uh, up until about October, we were keeping all the bills paid, but just barely. Uh, October and November, we had to defer paying our conference apportionments. But then, at the end of the year, we got a couple of truly amazing gifts for which I am eternally grateful. And... We not only got our portions paid, we're finishing the, the year better than I've ever seen it happen. We actually, our income was above, above budget for the year. Our expenses, through the care of everybody that was working on them, we actually came in about $50,000 under budget on our expenses. So, looking ahead towards next year, uh, that's about what we're looking for the cash flow to do. and. Lord willing, we're going to be in pretty good shape on the, the general fund stuff for the, for the year. Okay, uh, next one, please. Let's talk a little bit about the building fund. Uh, when we started the year, we still had a mortgage of about 150000 if I remember right. We got some pretty amazing gifts at the beginning of the year. As you know, we paid off the mortgage in January last year. The... Con contributions have continued to come in at a good rate for the building fund. We've got a little over $600,000 in the building fund right now. And the building fund has been, it, people have been contributing roughly $600,000 a year for the last several years at that, so we're pretty optimistic on that for next year, too. Uh, next one. Uh, Besides what we spend here in the church itself, we've got a lot of special giving projects. This is just a brief summary, and I'm pretty sure I missed a couple of them on there, but that's where a lot of our missions money has, has gone in uh, 2015. Um, okay, we've talked a bit about attendance. Uh, I keep track of that stuff. And as you can see, for the last three or four years, that curve shows things have been going down. But, skip to the, to the next one. That one gets kind of busy, but if you look out there at the end, you can see that for all three services, it looks like since early last year, our attendance has actually been ticking in, in an upward trend, which is a great thing. Uh, kind of contributes again to, you know, this, this place isn't big enough, which we've known and Hopefully that will lead into the to the next part of this. Thank you.
Let's hear it for Chuck. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to introduce Mary Catherine. Um, she's our district superintendent, as you know, but maybe you don't know. Uh, she loves Jesus. Uh, she leads our, our district, which encompasses something like the greater Peoria area, but we're called the Illinois... Illinois River District, 70 churches in the Illinois River District. Uh, she's going to lead us through our charge conference. So what you need to do is take out the piece of paper that you have. And uh, I'm going to stay on hand to maybe interpret some of that. Oh, gosh. I, I know I can't, but I'd rather just start preaching. <laughs> you know, d now stop and think about that. How often do you find this many people in the middle of the afternoon on a Sunday in a sanctuary? I mean, don't you think it's prime time? <laughs> prime time to go with it. But in actuality, it's uh, a blessing to be here because you're mine. I don't get here that often, but if I want church, you see it's all 70 of those churches that make up my congregation. So I don't get that personal connection unless there's a church like this that keeps doing things. And you require a district superintendent. Now, do not misunderstand. I would call that good behavior, <laughs> that you keep doing things and need a district superintendent present. It's when I have to call Gary or Lori into the office that you need to worry about. <laughs> but to be with you all is, is just a great, great moment. Um, there's so many words. One that I love out of our heritage is immersion. Immersion. And to be immersed in the spirit, to be bathed in the spirit, you start that process as you wade into the unknown, the unknownness of what life gives. And we call that prayer. When you literally start handing pieces of yourself over and putting yourself out there and saying, all right, Lord, I'm available. Start working with me. Give me Give me what you want me to know. Keep my heart open to whatever that might be. And whatever, Lord, erase the language no from my vocabulary when it comes to you. Ah, that's an immersion. And so you have been doing that for a long time. It was good to be able to be a part of that this afternoon, Gary, with you as well. What you have before you that we need to, I need to officially call you into order as a church conference with two pieces of business. One is to approve, receive and approve the study committee report. And my understanding is you all have a copy of that, correct? Is there anybody who does not have that? want to be as inclusive as we possibly can be. That report, uh, Gary, is there anybody that you would like to have speak directly to this report? Um, or do you want to? I could. I bet that would be great. <laughs> I, want to give, uh, I want to give credit to, um, to Bruce Brown who shepherded us most of the way through this report. In fact, let's just pray for them right now. Lord, I just lift Bruce and Susan to you and Dustin and Cody, and I beg you, God, for your continued presence and strength for them every step of the way. Thank you for the dreams that you gave to Bruce. Thank you for the nudges you gave him. Thank you for the leadership you gave us through him. And uh, we want to be careful to remember him and them in all that they're going through in Jesus' name.
Amen. Um, I'm not going to read this. I'm just going to say the first part is an introduction. It kind of hist- puts in history uh, where we are. I'll read part of it. In essence, we've been studying the issues surrounding space for well over a decade. When ground was first broken for this facility, it was intended to be everything but Sunday morning facility except for Cross Connections, our contemporary service, which at the time was meeting off-site. They would move to the new facility. In the midst of the building process, it was decided to move the entire congregation and all of its activities to the new building, which though modified somewhat, was not designed to accommodate such usage. Our studies at that time included the need for a relatively swift addition of first an education wing, phase two, and subsequently a sanctuary, phase three. While we've been striving to pay off the debt for phase one, thank you, Jason, for leading us through that, wherever you are. There you are. Thank you, Jason. Um... We have endured cramped conditions for both Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. Present space usage is a part of what this study committee examined. Since since we've moved into the present facility, our attendance has dropped an average of 15 or 20 per year, though we have seen some upturn, as Chuck pointed out, this last year. While the morale, giving, and general satisfaction of the congregation remains stable, we think that part of our slight decline may involve the cramped conditions. As one member has said, who is sitting in this room, if we don't do something about our space issues soon, people will leave. It is difficult to assess the truth of that. So then there's this little portion about the needs of our church and community, demographic stuff, uh, projected potential membership and attendance. Um, uh, Just... This is all done according to the discipline. The program ministry for Morton United Methodist Church as we, uh, as we affirmed it in 2015 at our charge conference, and that list is there. The space study on page two. Oh, and, and I, by the way, if you just analyze the program of ministry, More space would help us with numbers 1, 3, and 6 in our thing there. But space study, uh, we've asked two different committees to study our space needs since we've moved into this facility. Our first study group in 2009, after moving to this facility in 2008, using our current floor plans, studied each room and its use day by day and hour by hour. They were making sure that each room was being used to its full potential and to see if there was any availability of rooms within the schedule. The conclusion of the committee was that all rooms were already being used to their full potential and that we did not have enough space to expand any programs. It was also determined that on Sunday mornings we really needed 16 education rooms the size of our current youth room to meet our current Sunday school needs. Our current facility has only one room of that size. Our second study group in the fall of 2013 was a part of our whole church analysis. They began to ask more specific questions about the actual space needs and potential cost. Using some of the concept drawings from the original design for phase two, we consulted with a construction firm to get a general idea of future potential cost for the education wing. Those cost estimates were presented to the administrative board. It was determined at that time that the church needed to pay off the phase one debt before considering phase two project. It was also determined that once we sold the original church property, some of those proceeds would go to hiring an architect to help us validate our findings and provide us some very conceptual direction for phase two that could be presented to the congregation. The old church building was sold in 2012, We hired Keach Architectural Design of Morton, Illinois, to help us with that. It was made very clear to the congregation that these were not final building plans. That was two years ago. But a chance to revisit our original plans and ensure that we were heading in the right direction based on current needs rather than those of over seven years earlier. Mr. Keach conducted an open roundtable forum for the entire congregation to attend and provide input into a variety of topics that any new built space must address. From that input and his own analysis, he came up with the written space needs program for our facility 
uh, and that report is real long and technical and it's going to be attached to the one we send to the to the B district committee on building and to Mary Catherine. Once that report had been reviewed with the church, we asked him to provide some basic conceptual floor plans which would allow us to better calculate actual square footage of phase two. With the square footage number in hand, this also let us better project a budget for the new phase two work as well. This work was presented to the congregation two years ago. The accessibility plan, the conclusion. We believe that we have exhausted all efforts for better use of this facility in its current configuration. Using our own membership to study the issue, then validating that with the professional architect, we believe that the only viable option is for the Morton United Methodist Church to begin the process of our phase two education wing. Our overriding goal when we started our phase one project was Jesus teaching about the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Our phase two project is the Morton United Methodist Church's next step in that process, submitted by Bruce and myself. Official record, I need to have somebody make a motion that this be received and voted upon. You make the motion? Okay, make sure you get that in those minutes because that's what will go to my office. <laughs> is there a second? Okay, Mr. Mike is going to second that. So it's been moved and seconded. Now we can open it up for conversation or questions. Anybody at all? In reference to the study committee report that you have before you, any, any comments, any questions? This is where you're supposed to get excited. <laughs> this is where you can talk. I know you're in a sanctuary, but you can still do that. I'll, I'll be the roving mic person. And you will probably have to answer the questions. I can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just have, I just have a statement. Oh, well, Linda has oh. a question. No, I'm not. Oh, just I have a statement. I was on the original, um, this first study group in 2009, and we concluded then that we had no space. So it's been seven years, and <laughs> you I'm still ready. don't have any space. Is that what you're telling me? And I just want to say. Let's go. I'm, I, I, I do my math quickly there. <laughs> As a Sunday school teacher, I would love to have more space. I'm cramped in the room that I'm in, and we're standing on top of one another. <laughs> Try not to step on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Our Sunday school meets in the library, and on Sunday, we have the kids coming in and out all the time. We'll be in prayer. And then they're going by and they wave at us and stuff. And anyway, we get a big kick out of them. But it's, it's called just, active prayer. Close, right. close contact. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Anybody else? David? I can uh, add one more element to that. And everybody's pretty much aware of it is uh, uh, these disciple classes that are going on right now. Uh, Pastor Paul's got one on Thursday morning, and uh, and Pastor Gary's got one on Tuesday night. Both are just out of this world. I mean, they're just fantastic, and the attendance uh, shows it. They're they're bursting at the seams. Glory it's disciple Bible Bible study that you do, and Pastor Lori on Monday. <laughs> We're going to be inclusive. Give her some love. <laughs> Eric made the comment a little while ago about his, his office uh, as a closet, which is what it was supposed to be. <laughs> In addition to the problems we have with uh, the Sunday school rooms or lack of them around here, the other thing we don't have is any place to put anything that we can actually use for those Sunday school classes or anything else. So, and that's all part of this new part, uh, idea, too. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Carrie, Carrie. Oh, let's hear about the rehearsal room. <laughs> As the band has, the praise team has always 
always made the best of any situation. And I always say that if we can worship in the KC Hall next to the bar and the pool tables, that we can do just about anything anywhere. I'm getting but, worried. <laughs> okay. But there, there, if everybody, everybody in the band is there, there's about 14 of us. And if you have seen the room behind the sound booth, that is what we laughingly call the rehearsal hall. It, you know, and the thought of the millions of dollars of debt or anything make, kind of make me sick to my stomach to think about that much debt. But not doing, not doing it makes me feel so much worse because we have so much potential and so many, so many lives to reach. And I, I think we would be doing the kingdom of God and injustice if we don't do something about it. Anyone else? Gosh, this is my, my talkative side over here. Along those lines, in terms of what Carrie was saying, just to address perhaps some fears that maybe I'm only stupid enough to ask here, but we did fall behind at, at one point in our conference dues, did some budget cutting. Mm. So if we could just have some conversation or dialogue about kind of addressing those concerns. And yes, I think it's clear that the need is there, but can we afford it? If someone could talk about that a minute. Chuck or Lori, do you, do you want to say anything? I don't J Jason, you can contribute on or this Jason too. too. Uh, the conference has got some pretty clear guidelines on what you need to do to uh, finance a project like this. Yep. Uh, let me, let me, you, how about if I just share what that is in a simple form? Yeah. It's a third in hand. In other words, you, if, if your cost is going to be a million dollars, then a third of that million has to be in hand before you do anything. Another third pledged or promised, and you can only therefore borrow that uh, unended or that element, that last third that you don't have. So it's a third, a third, a third. That's, that's the easy formula to remember. And we've looked pretty carefully at that. Uh, we are not at a point yet with anything where we can create any kind of a budget. I mean, we've, we've guessed at numbers to go with it, uh, and they're big numbers, and they're scary numbers. But uh, we all, I think, share the concern you're mentioning. Uh, we don't want to be in debt forever on this thing or fall into the danger of not being able to do it. So there will be significant care on that. I think I can say that. There, there is another element that, you know, you've prompted, and I, I, I want to be extremely transparent. Even if you had all of that, let's say you had a third in hand and you had a thir another third promised and that other, the district committee on church and location has to approve every piece of that. So it's not just, you know, oh, we, we are going to be led by the Spirit of God and we know it's going to happen. We have to have absolute clear, a clear picture. That district committee is made up of a combination of clergy and laity, fairly designed. And um, as long as I'm your district superintendent, my intent is not to get any church into a financial uh, quagmire at all. So I plan to go specifically by that design. Thanks. I have just a, a quick comment. and. A paragraph jumps out at me on the first page that says that between 2000 and 2010, if I read this correctly, our growth was 8%. Well, in all the news that we hear about churches declining to the point that we have very small numbers of people and they're all elderly, ours is the exact opposite. We are still drawing families to this church, and even though it says it has leveled off, I suspect we are going to continue to grow as our community grows. So 
I, for one, um, believe, even though we do have standards that we have to comply with, that there's nothing wrong with a mortgage. And the fact that we had a mortgage from 08 to 15 and it was already paid off, that to me is beyond lightning speed. Now, I grant we had a facility that was designed to do multi-purpose everything. And it has functioned beautifully as a multi-purpose everything. I think it's amazing that we were able to pay this off in such a fantastic amount of time. And I, for one, am not afraid of a mortgage. And yes, we have to have a certain amount down and a certain amount pledged, mm -hmm. just like buying a house. Um, I think I feel very comfortable moving ahead. Now, I haven't seen exact figures. I know we don't have exact figures. Is it going to be $5 million? Is it going to be $10 million? But it's okay. Look what we will have when we're done. It's, it, I, I am not afraid about this at all. I, I don't think I'm probably alone, but I think we're going to grow, and I think we need the space, and I think it's okay to have a mortgage. And we may not pay it off in seven years again. It may take longer, but that's okay too. Because it's like buying a house. You know how much your mortgage payment is every month, your taxes and your insurance. It's okay. I think we'll be fine. Bless you. I know we're still in the uh, approval of the study committee report section here, and we're probably beyond on the financial considerations, but maybe just a couple comments there. One, we do need to remember that we're keeping our general fund and our building fund separate, and we do that for a reason so that mm -hmm. we watch those. Mm -hmm. We did create some high-level financial considerations, but we did not want to get ahead of that. Had we gone in depth on that, we would be getting ahead of this building committee and the things that we needed to do, so we haven't gone deep into that yet. But with whatever we decide to do, there would be a full financial plan that went with that. And I agree that it was pretty quick that we paid that off, and personally I would prefer to have three-thirds of that up front but also agree that, you know, this is probably not an attainable thing without having uh, some sort of debt that goes with that. But a full financial plan would go with that, and we'd want to look at what that looks like to support whatever it is that we decide to do if we decide to do that. Your district committee won't approve the movement if that full financial plan isn't in place. So we, we have as many stops along the way possible, not to prevent, but to make sure all the bases are covered. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, that's one reason why I'm a United Methodist, is because I appreciate a uh, church that has a hierarchy and a structure that doesn't leave the individual congregations on their own. Well, bless your heart. Thank you, Jesus. May I report that the next time we meet next <laughs> week at Cabinet to the bishop? No, I, I, I agree totally with Sharon. That that's one of the reasons I am a United Methodist is for the, the umbrella of accountability and authority that exists. I praise the Lord for that. Anybody else? There's another one. Then, hope I didn't turn anything off. Then, <laughs> um, just we're talking about uh, finances in churches. I mean, I guess from looking at that, I mean, I've seen churches handle debt in different ways. I've certainly seen where churches have taken on debt, and maybe they they, they could pay their debt, but it affected their other ministries because it was a burden. And that we have to be careful about that. Yeah. I've seen some churches where literally. What we call our general fund, they service their debt with what we'd call our general fund. That would look like a struggle for us. So we just, not that we shouldn't borrow money, we just need to be very cautious in that manner. That would be all I would say to that. Amen, brother. He can walk over here, folks. I know he can. Do you want to say He's got those new knees. <laughs> they work really well. Okay, nobody else. I have nothing to say. Okay. He has nothing to say. <laughs> you know, my, my heart gravitated to what you just said, 
about the, the concern. Sometimes people get gung-ho about building and then they forget ministry. Amen. And um, I, I once had that concern where I was serving. And my fear was as, as much growth had taken place in ministry and particularly mission, taking care of others, and I had many voices say to me, well, that will drop now because there's X amount of dollars. You know how we all think. There's X amount of dollars, and this, this wonderful column will drop over here, and those monies will move over here to building. Um, those kinds of things move pastors into a deeper level of prayer than what maybe anybody would ever realize. Particularly if you have the heart, which my heart was in those days and still is, passionate about the church not re just maintaining itself, but going out of the walls, beyond the walls, and to touch the lives of those who have not yet found this place. Pray and pray and pray. That's all I did. And as it turned out... Actually, the mission and ministry increased. Isn't that amazing? Where the fear, the apprehension, because of those who thought, well, we don't know. And see, and that's the issue we have. It's, it's, my line is, which F word is yours? Faith or fear? And you have to balance those. And it's a healthy tension. It's a, I mean, I don't want people to go off and do silly, ridiculous things. It's a healthy tension that you have to live into. But when you get out of whack, out of balance, things that maybe God really doesn't want might happen. But I, I think as long as there are the voices like you all lifting those kinds of things up, that won't happen. It's when you become unaware that sometimes you travel down the wrong path, not knowing where it's going to lead. So, it's been moved, it's been second, we had conversation. Is there anybody that would like to call for the question, meaning the actual vote? I need somebody to say. Do you record that, please? Okay, the ballots have been ex given out. You're voting on the study committee report that it be received. That was the motion. We are not voting yet on the committee. We are just voting on the narrative there, the study committee report. And so if you are in favor of moving forward, receiving this report and affirming it as something to go on now to work to the next level, you would vote yes. If you are not in favor, you would put your X in that no box. And as Gary and I chuckled as I was coming in, please remember this is not Cook County. <laughs> <laughs> now you have, to, you have to grow up in the old central Illinois to understand that. That's where I come from. But uh, only one vote per person. <laughs> And you must be a member of this church. That's my assumption when the, the ballots were given out, yes. And watch the magic where she takes them. <laughs> and who is going to do the counting of those? Or? Okay, what I'm going to need is the total number present, the total number of votes cast, the total number of yes, the total number of no. So I need four totals. And somebody gets to do the music. I don't do that. Because I want you to stay around. Three ninety four, let's start with that one. Then you can pick one if we still have time. You might know it by heart, but the hymnals are over here if you don't have one. We don't have them on the screen. Three ninety four. Just start playing, they know it. 
Ever heard this one? Something beautiful? Something good? Try it. Something beautiful. Something good. All my confusion be understood. All I had to offer him was broken. But he made something beautiful of my life. Got one you want to sing? 393. Here we go. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me, melt me. Another one? 369. Oh, fun. Sing strong now. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Third verse, perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. One more. One more. 367. One verse. Okay, are you ready? Well, I'm going to change one thing. He has counted me 
as being a part, and I can't be a part, so I'm going to move it to 60 instead of 61. And out of those 60 able to vote, there were 52 yes, 0 no, 9 not voting. Do you hear that? 52 yes. How about, how about, well, he's still counting me in that nine. How about if we just do a uh, quick doxology? The old fashioned one. <laughs> Is it 95 or four? Oh, I, oh, oh, now I went and did it. Oh, 95 will work. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. This, just play this one. This will work. Oh, you didn't. Oh, your page is not even there. Oh. What do you guys do here to the pages? It's a Are you out of room book. for that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your preacher. I'd probably have you do that again and actually smile. <laughs> You'll have another act of business to do. You have on the back of your corrections to make. page or your <clears throat> study committee report the listing of names for those to be on the building committee, the nominees. And I was just told by your pastor he has either additions or corrections. Okay, if you'll look, of course we're really only electing the building committee, but I want you to know that Don Chapman's name got left off the spiritual support team, so please put Don Chapman. We've had one prayer meeting together and it was awesome. Um, and on the building committee, uh, this morning, John Ackerman asked if he could serve, so put him on there. Put them, you know, right above Sam's name. Do you want to talk to me first? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, John Ackerman, and of course, uh, Josh Rassi is moving. He told me this morning that he would be a long-distance consultant if, if needed. So I decided we'd leave his name on there. He'll be in Texas, be praying for the Rassi family. We hate to lose him, but uh, we want to lift them up to the Lord. And the, the others, um, the, the others are as read, or as printed. Glad you left my pen. <laughs> All right, I, same kind of thing. I need a motion for the building committee nominees, as has been corrected with the addition of John Ackerman's name. Would somebody make this a motion that we receive the building committee nominees to become the building committee? Okay. Bob is making the motion to receive. Is there a second? Sure. Second? Any other conversation now that it's been moved and seconded? Any other conversation? Are these good characters? Definitely characters. <laughs> <laughs> Are they faithful to Morton United Methodist Church? <clears throat> no, there's no thinking about this. You know. You either know or you don't know. Okay. Are they people that work toward and are led by the Spirit of God rather than the culture around them? You didn't know I was going to ask all this. This is a good questions. question. It's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> are they people 
that are approachable by anyone in the congregation if they should want to come and talk to them about what it is they're doing or have input or an additional insight. Would these be folks that would be receptive to that? Yes? yes. yes? Almost sounds like you're getting married again, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, and I do, and I do. No other questions on any of your part. Okay, we're going to do uh, a stand vote for this one, just to have people, is that all right with you? Sure. So if you will approve this building committee as stated here, would you stand up so we can get a good count? Okay, and you may be seated. If you would not approve this committee or would like to vote against the committee as stated, would you stand up? <laughs> I'm standing, it's okay though. All right, if you would like to abstain, meaning you want neither to cast a yes or a no vote, would you stand up? Okay, you have your count. Total of? <coughs> 50 approving. Okay. This committee is going to have to go to work. That's what you just signed up for, as if that's news. If you're in the United Methodist Church, and if you're a growing church, then everybody's working already. You know, that's just the way it is. You're always working. You're always being called out by the Spirit of God to do something, a new insight, a new opportunity, a what if, how could we, those kinds of phrases come into play. So I appreciate the good work that you've done. You've elected your slate. You've approved the study. And your pastor and I will, I'm sure, have further conversation when that time comes. But this I know. We, we've, we've brought it up in various ways. But this I do know. The Spirit of God is in this place. The Spirit of God is in you, or you wouldn't be here. And the Spirit of God never goes on sabbatical. And I think there is something absolutely beautiful about your doing this in the Lenten season. Because it is in that season that we celebrate more than maybe any other time, but we do celebrate it that God is making all things new and a newness, the newness of God's Spirit working through you will impact lives that you'll never know. One of the most humbling and sometimes emotional places for me in my own mind is when I go around my churches and typically I know that those churches are there because of the ones who have gone before them, who have now joined the communion of the saints. And I hope that you don't forget that. Those who have gone on, that had once an opportunity to do the kinds of things you have done today, to listen, to be grounded in faith, and to lead where the Spirit of God is calling. The church conference officially is concluded. Thank you. And you'll get me that information, I'm sure. I would like you to stay here. And me I would go. like Mary Catherine to pray, but I'd like, uh, we had several of our um, <coughs> building committee that could not be here, but a number of you are here. So if you are on the serving on the building committee, or on the, the prayer support team, come on up here, and then others of you can come up and lay hands on them. And then I'd ask our district superintendent if she'd pray over. 
Yeah. Lay hands on each other too. Since In youth groups in the past, I used to say, let's get connected. <laughs> That's what we're doing here, It's getting connected. Let's pray. Lord God, almighty, almighty in power, almighty in knowledge, almighty in the vision that these folks are yearning to make for the community of Morton and beyond. The fruition of much hard work and much diligent praying has brought them to this point and now they're ready to begin to build a segue for the next step. I give you great thanks, O oh God, for these who have said yes to serving in this very unique and sometimes defining and sometimes troubling way. But we know as the community of the faithful, that it is your spirit that will work within them to create the possibilities through the gift of harmony, the gift of love, the gift of hope. For many are suffering, O oh God, for not knowing the immensity of your grace upon their lives, your love in their hearts. So may this committee, this group, always be grounded in your love, washed in your grace, yes, and empowered by your gift of hope. Yes, Jesus. This I ask in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Bless you all.